Hi guys, Scott Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you have been introduced to how push notifications work. In this video, we will explore this further and try to understand how to actually implement it. Well, there are two components here. One is the FCM, the other one is the mobile app. It would be quite normal to ask a question, how does the FCM know where to push notifications? There could be hundreds of devices. You may want to push it to one particular device or to a certain devices which fall under a particular category. The another aspect is how does the mobile app receive the pushed notification? Well, when it comes to FCM, you have to configure the mobile app in FCM and typically this is done in a Firebase console and when it comes to making sure that the mobile app receives the push notification, you have to basically integrate FCM SDK in your Android app and this is done in the Android Studio, the IDE in which you are developing your mobile application. So if you have taken care of configuring the Firebase Firebase console and integrating FCM SDK in Android app then basically a proper handshake will happen and the push notifications will work perfectly fine. So quite frankly you can understand that there are two systems here. The one is Firebase console which is a web based platform provided by the Google and the another one is Android Studio IDE which is your development framework. So let us now concentrate on what you need to do on the firebase console first of all you need to have a firebase account you can do that just search on google firebase and if you don't have an account you can create one it is free of cost and once you create the firebase account the next is you have to add the mobile project and then later you have to configure certain settings for that particular mobile project in the firebase console when you do all that what you basically get is a downloadable file which is called as google services.json file this particular json files needs to be downloaded and then you have to integrate that json file in your application when i say application your android application in your android studio so as you can see here there are quite a number of steps let's have a look at how all these different steps would actually look like in firebase console this is how a firebase console looks like there are already quite a number of projects here but we will ignore those and we will create a new project so for that let's click on add project we will have to enter a project name so in this case i will just enter sample dummy project and then i will have to accept conditions and then click on the create project and it will take some time for the firebase console to create the project so once the project has been created click on the continue button so what you are now seeing is console for that particular application as you can observe here firebase is not just for android you can configure it for ios web applications and even unity 3d applications but we will be only concentrating on android so let's click on that particular icon this should navigate you to a setting page of the application and what you have to enter here is package name package name is nothing but a unique identifier using which your android application gets identified and then you have to enter nickname this is just an optional you can enter it or choose to ignore it and the next option is debug signing certificate but it is optional so let's leave it click on the register button Firebase will now take few moments and it will give you an option to download a Google service.json file. Now download this particular file. As you can see, it is also showing where you should place this particular file in your Android project folder. If you want to have a look at the file, you can have a look at it, but you can pretty much choose to ignore it. Do not edit this particular file. It contains all the necessary configuration that your Android application needs for the push notifications to work. So just keep the downloaded file as it is at the saved location. We are now basically done with everything that we 
need to do on the Firebase console. That is why when you now click next, it will start showing you how to put certain configurations in your Android applications Gradle build file. If you already have the Android application ready, you can click on sync now, but otherwise you can simply click on next. Firebase console will now try to check whether it has a working healthy connection with app but if you don't have the app ready you can simply skip this by now you have a application configured in the firebase if you want to delete click the settings icon near project overview and then select project settings and then come down there is an option called delete project just select all the options and then click delete project that should delete the project from the firebase console another aspect that i want to emphasize is Google keeps modifying the layout of the Firebase console every now and then. At the time of publishing this video, which is May of 2019, this is how the console layout looked like. So if you are looking at this particular video probably after one year, the layout might have slightly changed. But those changes would not be significant. You should still be able to do the things that we just did now. It's just a matter of finding out where to find those options in the new layout so you may have to put some effort there so let's proceed so after having looked at firebase console to configure the application you might be wondering is there a simpler mechanism where i can do all of this without having to context switch between a firebase console and android studio ide the answer is yes and the solution is in android studio itself android studio nowadays comes with built-in tool called as firebase tool assistant using this firebase tool assistant you can pretty much configure everything that you were doing in the firebase console from the android studio itself i actually prefer this way of configuring my firebase messaging service into the application because it just helps me to avoid context switch between multiple screens i shall show you how to use this particular tool in the next video so stay tuned that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye